Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss how you can perform error handling while using Snowpipe. Okay, regarding Snowpipe, I have already discussed many concepts and how to send event notification if Snowpipe fails that also. Now, that thing we can configure using SNS, which is another AWS service widely used in serverless computing domain. But suppose you want to monitor your snowpipe, you want to do troubleshooting in your snowpipe, that fundamentally how you can do with SQL and Snowflake itself, that's what I am going to cover in this video, okay. So for this discussion purpose, first what I am doing, first I am dropping a database S3 to Snowflake, okay, if it is existing, okay. So if I show you the outcome, drop statement executed successfully, it is already dropped, perfect, okay. Then what we are doing, we are creating the same database, okay. And here you will see that database successfully created, right? So if I go here and if I refresh this place here, we will be getting S3 to Snowflake. If I click on that, we will be having one information schema which will contain all the metadata. And the, in the public schema, we can basically create different types of tables, views and all these things. Okay, right? So that's pretty much it. Now what we will do, we will basically use this database. Okay, so it is also executed successfully, right? Okay, cool. Now what we are doing, we are basically creating a table in the S3 to Snowflake database in the public schema and the table name is ID data set. Okay. And what are the uh, columns and what are their data types? It is basically nothing but I am using this Setosa, uh, Virginica, Versicolor related, ID flower related uh, CSV file. So let me show you the data also. So if I just open one particular Setosa file, you will see that this one basically id is basically integer column and then sepal length sepal with petal length petal with four columns are there which are basically double type here and then last one is class name which is basically string type or fair cat type right so according to that only i have defined the ddl for this table creation okay id is number 10 comma 0 that means it is kind of integer type and sepal length sepal with petal length and petal with all are basically double type and the last one is class name which is basically fair cat okay so let's execute this query as well. So here you will see that table IDs dataset successfully created. Okay. So if I go here and if I refresh this particular place here, if I go to public schema here, you will see IDs dataset table is successfully created. Right. Up to this all set. Then what we are doing here, we are creating a file format. So our this file is basically CSV file with comma separated values. And as you can see, the first row is header. So according to that only, I created the file format, okay. File format name is my CSV format. Here you can give anything as per your choice. Field delimiter is comma because this is comma separated file and skip header one because first row is header. So we are asking to skip that and keeping rest of the things as default. I am just running this particular code and here my file format is successfully created, right? Now what we can do next step is we can create the external stage. So for that, I am going to AWS, I am going to S3 and here I will be creating one bucket for the demo. Okay. So here I will go to create bucket and then demo yt snowpipe error handling. Okay. Spelling might be wrong, but does not matter for the time being. I am creating the bucket here. Okay. Right. And then to make integration in between s3 and snowflake there are two options right one is user id password based authentication another one is role based authentication for the time being i am going to user id password based authentication but it is not that much safe like i always suggest go with role based if you are having option just for poc i am showing that's why i am just using user id password based authentication for root user but anyway i'll be deleting after this demo okay so first what I'll be doing, I'll be copying this AWS access key and here I'll be pasting that, right? And then here I'll be taking the secret key, I'll be copying that minimum thousand times I think I covered this thing, so nothing new here, no rocket science. And then here I'll be going and this thing I'll be taking and in the URL I'll be pasting that, okay? So this is our external stage, we are mentioning the file format as my CSV format, okay? So here we are basically creating our stage. Okay. Now what we can do, we can use this stage to make any integration in between S3 and Snowflake. Okay. Right. So if I execute currently list of at the rate snow stage, 
this because our stage name is no stage so let's let's execute that let's see what we'll be getting we'll be getting nothing because in this particular external stage currently no object is there right okay i hope up to this it is good now what we are going to do we are going to create a snow pipe okay create or replace pipe s3 to snowflake in the public schema and pipe name is pa auto ingest equal to true okay that is automatically this particular snow pipe should execute the copy command as soon as basically in our s3 bucket which is acting like external stage there some file will be coming that's it okay as copy into command we are executing in the table iris data set okay copy into iris data set from the external stage and file format we are mentioning that's it okay so let's execute that okay and see it is pipe successfully created all right then what we'll do next we will basically create the event notification so i will just execute so pipes okay and then here we will be getting the notification channel i'll be copying this particular complete one i'll be going back to s3 i'll go to properties and then here i'll be going to event notification create event notification demo error handling okay so currently i am keeping all object create event but suppose you are deleting some object from external stage and that you want to update in your snowflake table then you should check this one also all object remove event but for the time being i am just showing with respect to create event and sq sq we are using not sns but although you can configure this snow pipe with sns as well which i already covered in my playlist you can check and then here this is successfully created okay so event notification is successfully created right cool so let's see what next okay so here we created the event notification then here what we are doing we are checking whether any data present in iris data set or not because we have not uploaded any data in external stage ideally it should not be but let's just confirm that this table has no data okay see zero rows are there in this table okay now we will check whether our snow pipe is working or not okay but before going to that because in my this particular video the primary focus is how you can do troubleshooting i would like to discuss some concept okay so first new concept is this particular command okay just you need to execute this code to check the status of the pipe which is running in a serverless manner okay select system dollar pipe status and then give the pipe name okay so if i execute that here you will see that here you will be getting one json okay and here see execution state is running state okay right and here notification arn and last received message timestamp all this it is showing okay right what we will do now we will basically upload some file in our external stage and we will try to see whether it is automatically coming in the table or not okay but before going to that i would like to show you one more thing that here if you check this json this particular key okay last received message timestamp that is from external stage when last trigger happened okay this time just make a note okay so that it will be helpful for troubleshooting and or getting a feeling okay because suppose you are noting it down and then you are uploading some file then last received message timestamp should be updated okay and next time when you will execute the same query to check the pipe status you should be getting some timestamp which is greater than the earlier one that's what i am trying to say so i'll be just keeping a note of this so i have noted it down and let's upload some file okay here i will go to upload i will go to add files and i upload setusa file okay and here we are uploading so it is uploaded successfully right so here let's see whether data came or not we need to wait some time currently also zero rows are there let's wait for some time okay so see 50 rows came okay and if you if i scroll little bit up here you will able to see id status related data came okay now see the beauty okay what i will do i will now execute again the same query system pipe status okay so earlier the last received message timestamp that is from s3 when last message it the pipe received that timestamp was this one now we should be getting such timestamp which is greater than this value right that way only we can understand okay the pipe is perfectly working right so if i go here 
and see last received message timestamp. I'll be copying this particular value. I'll be clicking on done, and then here if I go, I'll paste that value here. See now it is some value greater than the earlier one. It was 544 earlier, but now it is 547. Okay, that is always last received message timestamp should be getting updated as soon as you are uploading some file in S3. That way you can understand. Okay, at least the pipe is working, right? And not only that, obviously one more thing. Here, if you go, this is another important part. Okay, execution state, it is running. That will also ensure that your pipe is running. Okay, the health check kind of parameter you can consider, right? So, now what we will do? We will intentionally try to create some issue. Okay, and what is that issue? We will try to change the file format. Okay, so actually our CSV file is comma separated. But we will now update it and we will mention file field delimiter is pipe symbol. Okay, but actually it is not. Now what will happen? The copy command will be failing because in our destination table, what we created to load the ID setosa related information, ID flower related information, that table has basically six columns. But as we are mentioning here the pipe as delimiter and this particular kind of file when you will try to upload because this will be whole considered as a single row because these are comma separated but we are mentioning the field delimiter as pipe it will not able to find any pipe and it will consider whole whole row as a single column element right and that time the copy command should fail with this particular message that in destination you are basically having six column but you are trying to enter only one column that kind of error we want to artificially generate okay and we'll try to debug also so now we are updating the file format that's it okay now this particular file format only our pipe is using right so now what we'll do we will just make a note of the last received message timestamp here which is uh, I think 547, but let me just still load that exact value. Uh, yeah, this one, last received message timestamp, it is uh, 547. I'll be keeping a note, okay? So here I'll be pasting that. Now what we'll do, I, I will upload a same schema related file, virginica.csv, and we will check whether this particular key is changed or not, okay? So let me show you the virginica file. It is basically same file, same schema, only just for testing purpose we are now uploading but the thing is file format is changed so because this file is comma separated but we are mentioning the field delimiter is pipe now whole thing will be considered as one row and the copy command will fail because in destination there are six column but we are trying to ingest in only one column but that one column we are not mentioning in the copy command right so copy command will think okay at least the uh, data file should have six column which is getting ingested okay that way we are trying to artificially fail this code so what we will do i will go to here and then here i'll click on upload i will go to add files and then here virginica file i'll be uploading okay so here it is uploaded okay soon what should happen again if we check this particular last received message timestamp we should be seeing some value which is greater than this particular value. That way you can understand, okay, at least the pipe is working, okay. So let's wait for some time because uh, you know, right, that snow pipe takes some time to load the data. So it is not exactly real time. That's what I want to say, right. So here what I will do, I was basically here. So if I just check the last timestamp, it is this particular value. Is it changed or not? Uh, let me just paste it here. Uh, it is not changed actually, it is just uh, basically updating not yet the SQL is triggered. So maybe one, some seconds we need to wait more. Okay. See, now it got changed. Okay, let's put this there and let's compare. Okay. So here if we paste, see it is 551. Earlier it was 547. So what is the expectation? Last received message timestamp, that is uh, Snowpipe already received the file. Now it should be ingesting the data in this id's data set right so if i run that here we'll be seeing 50 rows only and all class elements are set only that is no virginica related file is uploaded why because copy command actually failed we intentionally failed that but how we can understand that is the question right how we can do troubleshooting and that's why you can use this particular command select star from table information schema dot copy history it is a table function 
just you need to pass the table name and in past from which timestamp you want to get the copy history okay so start time i am what i am doing i am adding minus 1 hour that is with respect to current time stamp i am going 1 hour back and since then whatever copy history is there that i am extracting or pulling okay so if i execute this one now here you will able to see first file which is setosa.csv we uploaded for there it successfully uploaded row count 50 row past 50 and basically no error also we got okay here if you expand this file error message null was there with respect to setosa but when we are checking virginica.csv here we are getting error what is the error number of columns in file does not match to that of corresponding table because in file only one column is there but in table six column is there okay it is showing inside parenthesis also use file format option to ignore this kind of error that that's what sonom flake is suggesting so now we understood how to debug snowpy that is basically we have to use this particular command okay very simple just you have to use copy history function and pass the table name and since passed what time step you want to inspect the pipe that's it okay now what we will do we will correct the file format okay earlier intentionally to fail the code we gave uh, pipe delimiter now we are reverting back to comma separator which is actual one and then what we will do we will make a note of the last received message time stamp which is basically 551 i think yes 551 so let me just make a copy right and then what we will do we will try to generate another artificial error okay and what is that error that is here i created one particular file which is having vertical related flower information and as you as i already discussed that sepal length sepal with petal length petal with a double type but intentionally i have imputed this particular column with one string type value so here also copy command should fail now we'll inspect that using this particular code information schema dot copy history okay so first we loaded the last received message time stamp for pipe now what we'll do we'll upload the vertical file okay and we will see first whether the last received time stamp is updated or not that way we can understand at least that uh, the pipe is trying to work okay so vertical error we will just click on upload okay and here it is uploaded now we need to wait little bit current timing is 551 so soon it will be upload updating okay so just wait for few seconds 20 to 30 seconds okay let me execute now if i go here see last received message time stamp got changed actually if i put that here for easy of comparison here you will see it is 555 earlier it was 551 that means snowpipe received the file now it will try to execute the copy command okay so let's execute the table uh, select star and let's see whether vertical uh, got loaded or not but no vertical file is not there now you might want to investigate what is the error just execute this particular same code what i shown earlier you will be getting the complete information and see here it is showing vertical error csv try to load but here in the error message it is perfectly showing numeric value 1.4 hello is not recognized okay and that's what we tried to intentionally create the error right 1.4 hello it is we specified this as numeric column but we are parsing as string that's why the copy command got failed okay so this is how you can monitor your snow pipe right i hope you got some feeling all these codes i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section try to execute the code because when you will execute practically not only simply watching videos but when you will practice simultaneously then only you will be able to feel the concept or the power of snowflake okay so this is all for my this video and if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you